what better year could it be to come home? You know, I can't help but think when we look at our prayer list and we see the section for salvation, I can't help but think that that would be a great thing, a great goal for 2021 to see some of those names drop off that list and move into the praise list. Come home. What a blessing that would be. I look forward to what this year has to offer. Now, apparently... I have mail. I don't know who did this. Is this you, Phil? It says, handle with care. From, from a friend. Yeah, I better, I better listen to make sure it's not ticking. Thanks for that warning there, Matt. That scares me that that's where your mind goes first. He, he's like Creed on The Office. You know that character on The Office that everybody's just like, I don't know about that guy. Okay, there's... There's peanuts in here for sure, the packing peanuts. So, you know, that will be all over the place later. Okay, apparently the peanuts mean nothing. It's below the peanuts. Okay. <laughs> There's my helicopter. <laughs> But you didn't put my face on it yet. <laughs> For those of you watching online or that are here and that don't know, we, we, you know, I had a word from the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's true, but that, that was our next goal. That was our next project was to get a big old helicopter, you know, because I see all these other big preachers and they've got, you know, million dollar helicopters and airplanes well we don't have the room for an airplane strip air, air, for a strip uh, airport so I told them a helicopter is what we need so this is our South Park Baptist Church helicopter that will take me from the North Worship Center to the South Worship Center and back safely we might have to remove the roof so we can make a landing in here I don't know but I don't think this is going to blow anybody's hair so you guys will be okay so I'm just going to lay that there, and you can think about what you've done. <laughs> Whoever it is that done that, because it didn't sign it. But I am going to send that box through handwriting analysis this week. So maybe we can zero in on the target, okay? It's going to be a great 2021. We've already got a helicopter. I mean, come on. What, I, I, how much better can it be, right? Now, it's time for honesty. If you're watching online, you have to participate, okay? You have to play along. You have to raise your hand for everybody in the room to see. For those of you here in the South Worship Center, those of you there in the North Worship Center, you got to play along as well. And we want to see where the old people are, okay? Who made it to midnight? Raise your hand. Wow. Wow. That's way more than I expected here in the South. I don't know about those of you in the North or, or in the, uh, watching online, but listen, I saw all kinds of posts online that says, I'm not even trying. Happy New Year. I'm going to bed. That's at like 6.30. Really? 6.30? I'm like, Darren's like, I didn't go to bed till 6.30 in the morning. You know, that's just his normal day. But... I made it to midnight, but I got to admit that, you know, it used to be easier. You know, now, as we're counting it down, we're like, okay, there's only 20 minutes left. So let's brush our teeth now, you know? Let's go ahead and floss on commercials, you know? Let's, let's get everything done, get PJs on. I can't lie, I was in PJs all day, okay? I didn't get out of PJs, but... We started preparing for bed long before, you know, when we wouldn't even thought about that in the past. So I am getting older and older, and it won't be long, and you'll see me posting at 6.30. Happy New Year. I'm going to bed. Wait, no, Melissa's not here today because she's in quarantine again. Um, Melissa, maybe you can do some research. Can I schedule that post, you know, to go up at like midnight? That way they think I stayed up all night. Maybe you can do some research for me and see if I can do that next year. That way I can go to bed at 6.30 and get a good night's sleep. Listen, some of you did not stay up 
to usher in the new year, did you? You stayed up to make sure the old year passed away, right? You made sure that the clocks didn't stop magically two minutes before. <clears throat> You're saying, nope, I'm staying to make sure it's gone, right? That's the kind of year that some of us, we feel like we've had. And when we look back and we see that, you know, I, I titled the message. Yeah, there it is. 2020, need I say more? When we look back on 2020, we could make statements like, wow, what a year, couldn't we? We could make statements like, I could not even have imagined a year ago that we would go through what we have gone through, that we would see what we had seen in the past year. If we thought back, think back about everything that you went through last year. And last Christmas, you had no clue that all of that was going to happen, did you? You had no clue. I wish that we had this magical crystal ball that we could look into and see what the new year holds. For some of us, we don't want to see that, do we? Because for some of us, that's heartache and heartbreak and loss of loved ones and jobs that didn't go the way we thought they ought to go. For some of us, we don't want to look in a crystal ball, right? We just want to deal with it when it gets here. I don't, I don't want to have to think about it in the future. And had you been able to look into your crystal ball last year and see 2020 and all that was going to come, you'd have never thought, would you? It was unbelievable. It was crazy, right? We'd have never guessed that in 2020 we would have an amazing, great year. And you're all shaking your heads like you're like, what do you mean amazing, great year? You're, you're, you're insane, right? Were you not, not in the right atmosphere? You're not in this zip code because obviously we had a horrible year. Everything about that year was bad, right? That's what we think. But that's the human side of us, isn't it? That's the human side that says the negative, the negative, the negative. And if we only focus on the negative, then we miss the blessings. You'll miss how great last year was. You'll miss what God did last year. And you'll miss all of that because you were staying up till midnight to make sure it went away. Listen, some of the stuff that happened last year, it better happen again this year or our church won't be blessed. Your family won't be blessed. We won't get to enjoy some of the blessings that we enjoyed last year. But if we focus on the negative, we'll miss all of that again. Because I guarantee you, 2021 will be horrible the same way some of us think that 2020 was horrible. If we just focus on the negative, that's the way it's going to be. For those of you who are married, if you just focus on the negative, you're going to have a horrible marriage, right? What are you laughing for, Pat? Sharon looked right at him. He started laughing out loud. That is not a good thing, Pat. And she looked right at him. She was about to punch you right here in church, right? We'll have an invitation in a minute. You can come down, ask forgiveness for your sins. So go ahead and punch him. If he deserves it, he needs it, right? We're doing fist bumps anyway. She can just claim she missed. And she hit him in the face, right? Listen, we can't focus on the negative. We have to go through the negative. We have to endure the negative. But we got to focus on God. Today, we're going to be in Romans chapter 11. We're going to deviate from John a little bit. I'm going to surprise you. Some of you, you know exactly where John is. I just wanted to see today if you knew where Romans was. Maybe you've forgotten by now, right? So turn to Romans chapter 11. We're going to be there. The author here is speaking to Gentiles. He's speaking to Gentiles, and he's telling them that, listen, God has caused a partial hardening on the Israelites, on the Jews, a hardening of their hearts. And he says, he says God's caused that to come upon them, and he's brought you into the fold. That's the great mystery that the Bible talks about. 
is that Jesus caused this hardening in order to bring the Gentiles in to one fold, one, one group, not two. There were always two. There were Jews and Gentiles. And now he says, I'm going to bring that all into one. That's what Ephesians talks about. That's what he's talking about here in the book of Romans where God does this and the Gentiles are confused. They don't understand. They're, why would God do that? If the Israelites are God's chosen people, why wouldn't he just save salvation for God's chosen people and leave the rest of us Gentiles out? Aren't you glad he didn't do that? I am because I was one of them lost Gentiles without hope. And then in this passage today. If you're willing and able, would you stand with me for the reading of God's Word? We are in Romans chapter 11. We're going to read in verse 25. We're going to start right there. So watch what he says to the uh, Gentiles here. He says, lest you be wise in your own sight, I do not want you to be aware or, or unaware of this mystery. This is the mystery that we were just talking about. He says, brothers, a partial hardening has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. In other words, until the Gentiles have been brought into the fold, they've been offered salvation as well. He says in verse 26, and in this way, all Israel will be saved. Wait, he just brought in the Gentiles. Surely that should say all the Gentiles will be saved. He says, no, he hardened their hearts for a purpose. He says, I'm going to bring in the Gentiles so that they see that. And through that, they're going to be brought back into a right relationship with God. He says, until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, verse 26. And in this way, all Israel will be saved as it is written. The deliverer will come from Zion. He will banish ungodliness from Jacob. And this will be my covenant with them when I take away their sins. We're going to read on to verse 32. Look at verse 28, though. It says, As regards the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts, the calling of God are irrevocable. For just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they also may know, but may now receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for the message today. I thank you that you caused that hardening for a purpose and that you brought Gentiles into the picture that you brought into one fold, one shepherd, one faith. Lord, Gentiles and Jews, Israelites alike. Lord, I pray that you would just help us to focus today on the passage, on the message that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can be seated. So it's obvious the Gentiles are confused. They don't understand why in the world would God offer this to us? Why in the world would he go outside of his chosen people the truth is you were all chosen, were you not? Whether you were Jews or, or, or Gentiles or not, because we've seen even in the book of John where he says, I'm going to bring in the Gentiles. I'm going to make one shepherd, one flock, not two. Remember, if you look back and you study the tabernacle, there were two flocks, weren't there? It was clear. A Gentile could only go into the court of the Gentiles. They couldn't pass that. Point. That's as close as they could get. So God says, nope, even in the book of John, it's going to be one, one flock, one shepherd. And then here we see that mystery unfolding, how he brought them into the fold. So they're confused and they don't understand why God would do something like that. And that's not unlike us, is it? We're the same way. Some of us, that's why we stayed up till midnight. 
because we couldn't figure out why God would allow a virus to come in and wreck everything. How he would allow it to wreck our Christmases where we couldn't celebrate the way we normally celebrate with large family gatherings and those types of things where we couldn't get out when we were locked down, where we had to learn how to be comfortable and okay with just staying home and working puzzles all day long. You remember those days back in March and April and into May? You remember those days? Yeah, we couldn't figure out why God would allow that. And why he would allow some businesses to close. Why he would allow churches to close. Why he would allow all of that. But if we focus on just that, then we're just as confused as these Gentiles were. And we'll miss God's plan. We'll miss what God's doing. What God has done in our case. You'll miss everything good that happened in 2020. You see, last year, I preached a message. I think it was entitled, um, Is It? Hello 2020 or goodbye 2019. You remember that? I'm not going to preach that again because we see what 2020 brought, right? But yeah, we thought it was hello 2020, but now we're thinking, no, we need to preach that message again because 2020 was worse than 2019. But I don't think we want to wish that on anybody. But listen, we have to be focused on the good. We have to be focused on what God is doing and has done, or we'll miss that. And then we never get to the point in our life where we're thankful for what God has done and is doing. We can't miss that. So we have to be able to go back to 2020 and reflect just a little bit. Gentiles in this passage did not stay confused. Look at their conclusion. Look at verse 33. This is what they concluded. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. That was the first thing you said when the clock clicked over to 2021 the other night, wasn't it? You, you quoted this verse, didn't you? You said, whoo, 2020, thank you, Lord. Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and the knowledge of God. I doubt any of you were even thinking about that verse with the exception of me, because I might have been working on this verse that day, right? So, he goes on. How unsearchable are his judgments. How inscrutable. Now, that's a word we don't use very often, right? It means mysterious, or here's another word we don't use very often, because I have a hard time pronouncing it. Let's see if I can do it. Unfathomable. Nope. Unfathomable. I can't get the M in the right syllable. It doesn't go. The other ought to be separate, but mine just blends together. So that's what it means, inscrutable. It says, are his ways. None of you quoted that verse that night? Man, he's so amazing. Look what he did in 2020. years. like, he is inscrutable, right? He's unfathomable. Missed it again. I I just had to try it again just to see if it worked. It's how mysterious he was just, I never saw it coming, but look what God did. It was just an amazing year. Thank you, Lord. I hope 2020 is just as good. Listen, I don't care what year you go back to. If you focus on the negative, you'll label it horrible just the way that we think of 2020. Because if you just focus on the negative, look, I can go back to the year before. I can go back to the year before. The loss of of Monica's parents. The loss of my grandparents. I can go back to that year and I can say, well, that was a horrible year. I hope we never have a year like that again. Yeah, but that's the same year I graduated Dallas Baptist University. That was a blessing. How was that a blessing? Because God paid for it. I didn't have the money to pay for it. And when I surrendered to his will, God says, I've been waiting on that idiot i've been chasing you for 20 years and now finally you've surrendered and you're broke you can't even pay for schooling and i've been waiting on that and the next month god says boom here it is and i'm not just going to pay for that at dallas baptist university i'm going to pay for your master's degree your mdiv at the bma seminary in jacksonville all with the money that he'd been holding waiting on me to surrender But I could call that year a horrible year because that's the year. 
It was finals week. I didn't even get to go to grandpa's funeral. I could say that's the worst year of my life. I couldn't, I, I, li I loved grandpa. I used to love going home when we were over at grandpa's house, dad. I used to love going home and, and it'd be late at night and grandma would look at me and she'd look right in my face and she'd say, don't you dare ask him a question about the Bible when we get home. That's what she would say because she knew I would do it because I didn't want to go to bed and I knew I was all in to learning and he was all in to teaching and I would get on his bed and I'd say, Grandpa, how about this? Boom, here we go. And we didn't just stop with one book. By the time it was over, Grandma had a little tiny piece of the bed because there were books laid out. There were notes. Oh, I remember I wrote some on that 20 years ago. Let me go get it for you. Boom, here's a legal pad, handwritten, 30 pages long on that verse. You know, and we would talk till all hours of the night. I could call that the worst year of my life, but it wasn't. It's only the worst year of our life, 2020, if we focus on the negative. And we, when we focus on the negative, we miss everything positive that happened that year. These guys were not, they were not confused to the point where they focused just on the negative. Look at verse 34. He says, for who has known the mind of the Lord? That's what some of y'all were saying last year, right? What are you doing, God? Are you kidding me? You know, you spent a lot of time last year on your knees and you spent a lot of time last year looking up saying, I'm at the bottom. How do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Why are you doing this? Why won't you hear me? Why won't you respond? Look at verse 20, 35. Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things, including 2020. The year we all hated. The year of all years. To him, to Christ, to God, be glory forever. Amen. They were confused, but they didn't give up. Listen, 2020 did not surprise Jesus Christ. It didn't rock him. It didn't shake him. And it didn't stop him from doing and carrying out his plan. He carried out his plan Perfectly, I'm not telling you he caused COVID-19, that he caused all of the, the loss that we have experienced in the last year, but he can use it, can't he? He can grow us in that. Listen, when we focus on just the negative, we miss the blessing. That's a recipe for disaster. I want you to turn. I don't often make you turn, but I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 38. Over in Isaiah chapter 38, in the early part of that, we're going to start in verse 10, but let me introduce you to what's going on. Early in the part of that uh, passage there in Isaiah 38, Hezekiah has taken sick. And Hezekiah has been faithful. He's a believer. He's been faithful. And he's, been, he's taken sick. And God sends Isaiah to Hezekiah to say, get your house in order because this is it. You're going to die. You're not going to recover from this sickness. So what does Hezekiah do? Focus on the negative? He prayed. He looked up. He did what many of you and, and, and I have done over the past 365 days, is look up and say, God, what is going on? Right? And, and he, he prays to God, and God hears his prayer, and he says, Isaiah, go back. He says, go back and tell Hezekiah that your prayers have been heard and they've been answered and I've added 15 years to my life, to your life. Now, Hezekiah can look at this in two different ways, right? He can look at this and say, well, this is the, the worst year of my life. One, I took sick and I almost died, but God gave me 15 more years. So this is the worst day of my life because now I've looked into the crystal ball. Now I know I only have 15 years left. What am I going to do? Woe is me. He could have said, this is the worst year of my life. I've been given a death sentence. 15 years, that's all I've got. Guess what? Truth be known, some of us today in this room, watching online, don't have 15 years left. And we don't know it. 
I heard the story this morning. 22 years old, I think he was. Snuffed out into eternity in a car accident this week. 22 years old. Somebody who would say, I got 15 more years. You don't know that. I don't know that. He didn't know that. We don't know what tomorrow brings. But Hezekiah can also look at this in the positive way and say, God heard my prayer. He gave me a gift of 15 more years. Can you imagine what you can do with 15 years? That's the way he could have looked at it. Now, after he recovered, he wrote some stuff down. This is what he wrote. Look at this in Isaiah 38 in verse 10. It'll be on the screen for you as well. Listen to, as we go through this first section, these first five or six verses here, listen to the pain that he's going through. This is you and me going through 2020. This is what he's going through right here. Listen to it, the tone of his writing, all of that as we go through it. He says, I said in the middle of my days, I'm too young to die, is what he just said there. That's the translation, right? He says, I must depart. I must die. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord. The Lord in the land of the living, I shall look on man no more among the inhabitants of the world. Do you see the state of mind that he's in? He goes on. It doesn't stop there. Verse 12. My dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day to night, you bring me to an end. Now, in verse 13, it sounds like he took a breath, right? The first phrase there, he says, I calmed myself until morning. Whew, okay, let's just take a breath and think about this. And then look at the next phrase. Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. Not just a bone, I'm completely broken. I'm collapsed. I'm at my bottom. I'm laying on the ground looking up the same way that many of us have looked up all year in the past 365 days. And we can't understand why God would break all of our bones. But he didn't. And he's waiting for you to see what he has done and what he is doing. And he goes on, he says, from day to night, you bring me to an end. Like a swallow or a crane, I chirp, I moan like a dove. My eyes are weary with looking up. Is that not last year? Some of us have been broken. Some of us, our eyes are weary with looking upward. Sometimes... God has to knock us down to rock bottom before we'll ever look up. Because every time that a valley comes into our life or a problem comes into our life, we think, I can handle that. It's okay if the car breaks down because I got enough money, I can cover that. That's all right. Those problems, they're not problems at all. Listen, last year with the house in Burleson, I felt like Hezekiah here in these first five, six verses. Broken. Lord, I'm tired. I'm weary of looking upward. I need a break. I need rest. I need a breath. I just need a good night's sleep. Wednesday, my prayers were heard. They were answered. We're done. It's gone. It's sold. We have no more drama when it comes to that. And today, at 2 o'clock, we're looking at three more houses. God has a plan. He was not rocked. He was not surprised about the drama that we went through. He was not surprised that somebody wanted it more than we did. He didn't, wasn't surprised about the tactics they would use to get it. They weren't surprised by any of that. But if I focus on that, I can say that was the worst year of my life. Or I could look at it and say, guess what? On Wednesday, it was over. It's the best year of my life. It's no longer a distraction from the ministry, from my life, from my family life, from my health. It's no longer going to be a part of that. I can move on. Therefore, 2020 is one of the greatest years of my life. And it ought to be the greatest year of your life. It doesn't matter that there was a virus. It doesn't matter that there were loss of loved ones. When we focus on what God has done in our lives, we can always see the positive in last year, can't we? 
We don't have to like the valleys. We don't have to enjoy them. But we can't focus on them. And Hezekiah doesn't remain focused on them either. Look at how he goes on. Now I want you to see the transition. You see those first six verses? He's totally focused on the problem. And that's what most of us have done with last year. We've totally focused on the problem. We haven't looked forward. We haven't looked through the problems to see what did God do? What is he doing? What is he trying to teach me? Look at how Hezekiah concludes this writing. Verse 15. What shall I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I walk slowly all my years because of the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things men live. And in all these is the life of my spirit. Oh, restore me to health and make me live. Behold, watch verse 17. It was for my welfare that I had great bitterness. None of you quoted that verse as the clock clicked over to 2021 either, did you? Everything I went through last year, it was for my welfare. All the bitterness, all the drama, all the chaos, all of that, all the loss, all of that, it was for my welfare. That's what Hezekiah concludes here. He doesn't focus on the negative. He says, but in love, you have delivered my life from the pit of destruction, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For shield does not thank you. Death does not praise you. Those who go down to the pit do not hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, he thanks you as I do this day. The father makes known to the children your faithfulness. The Lord will save me and he will play my music on stringed instruments all the days of our lives at the house of the Lord. Hezekiah determined in the end to be thankful and to praise God for the valley that he was going through. He didn't focus on the negative. He didn't focus on the fact that he only has 15 years to live. He focused on the fact that God heard his prayer, that his prayer was answered, and that he was given life. Listen, that's where we're at. That's where many of us are at for last year. Listen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, it'll be on your screen. It says, give thanks in all things, not for all things. He says, in all things. Does that mean COVID-19? Yep. Does that mean in the loss of a loved one? Yep. In all things, give thanks. That's the lesson that Hezekiah knew already. And when Hezekiah came down to the end, he says, the living thank you, as I do right now. That's the way we ought to be looking at 2020. The example that Hezekiah lays out for us here, I think that's important for us because that's how we need to be able to look back at 2020. As we approach 2021, we're expecting a better year, aren't we? At least that's what we're hoping. Some of you are eating black-eyed peas. Some of you are sick of black-eyed peas now because you thought that would change it. Guess what? They're not going to change a thing, but God can. He can change your attitude. He can change your focus. He can change everything about what you do this year that is to come. And he can say, you know what? The virus might not go away this year. (gasps) What? It's got to be gone next month, right? We don't want to do that. But it might not. And if it's not, that's not going to rock God. He's still going to continue with his plan. We just have to see his plan. And we can't focus on the negative. Yeah, we might have to wear a mask for another year. What? Stop cussing, right? Mask is like a curse word now, isn't it? Listen, I have made a revelation in the last couple of weeks that when a mask is put on and you wear glasses, you are on the the gates of hell right there, aren't you? Because all of a sudden you can't see. And it don't matter if you walked in from the hot to the air conditioning, you just can't see, can you? I have made a revelation, Miss Vicki Turner introduced me to a product called Zeiss. Now, y'all going to rush CVS after that, so we're going to see who gets there first. And you spray it once on both sides, you wipe it off, boom, 
no more fogging my glasses for like three days. I'm like, woohoo, I can live with this for another year if I have to. Because now I got Zeiss on my side, right? I got a product that'll fix it. Listen, if we go into 2021, the way we came out of 2020, well, then I guarantee you 2021 is going to be horrible. It's going to be the new worst year of your life. We got to focus on what God is doing and what he has done. There's two things that did not fail last year. One, God's word did not fail. It didn't fail, not one time, not in the face of a virus, not in the face of a lo lost loved one or a lost job or a lost business. It did not fail. And the second thing that didn't fail is God did not fail. He did not abandon you. He did not abandon me. He was with us the whole way. All of the valleys, because COVID caused a whole lot of valleys, didn't it? All of the valleys. He says, I'm with you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God's word didn't fail. He didn't fail. Hezekiah and the Gentiles in our passages that we looked at today, they didn't focus on the negative. They focused on the positive. And that is a lesson for us. Listen, if we focus on the positive of last year, I think we would all agree that our church, our church family had a great year. Wouldn't we? There's a few heads shaking. Some of them are shaking the wrong way, Phil. We've grown as a church, both physically and spiritually. Well, how do you know that? Because you give. We finished the year last year with margin in our budget, over $50,000 margin. We were shut down for months. We were drive-in church for 10 weeks. And then another week after that, to, to make the transition into the building where we were back straight online again, and still you gave. That's spiritual growth. That's health. That's the health of our church. That's how God has worked. We even baptized during drive-in church. You remember that, Johnny? I think Johnny's over in the North Worship Center. We got to baptize Johnny in a horse trough in the parking lot. Last Christmas, did you ever think that we would get the privilege to do that? Not that we would have to do drive-in church. Not that we would have to do online services or have to baptize in the way that we got to baptize Johnny. But we have to look at it in the positive light and say, we got to. We, got, we were privileged with the technology. We were privileged to be able to hold drive-in church and you still be able to hear it in your cars. And still, oh, by the way, stream it online. We entered into a technology fund right before all of this took place. Did we know that we were going to need it to survive it? No. And look at what God has done in our technology, just in this one little local church. We've made it better. We've learned. We've failed. We've adapted. We figured out what pieces of equipment, and we're not done yet. We're still in the middle of that, and we're still making progress. In fact, before I walked up here, I was standing back there talking about some slides that are, you're about to see, and I was looking at our online service as it's being projected right there on the table with them. They're about a minute behind us or so, so they won't hear me say that for another minute. And those of you online, you just heard it. That's all stuff that we've been working through. Listen, that's what God did for our church last year. He protected us physically. He's protected us financially. He's protected us when it comes to projecting the gospel. He knows that there's a command in the last verses of Matthew that says you have to make disciples. And that doesn't get put on hold for a virus. Therefore, you have to have the technology to be able to deal with it. You have to have, have the 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 passion, the energy to deal with it. You have to have all of that. Even if I close the doors for a couple of months, I want to see what you do. I want to see how you handle it. All of that has been a blessing from God in 2020. I think we had a great year 
last year. According to the church online platform, there are now churches just like ours streaming their services every week, not just during the lockdown. They will do it from now on, in most cases, streaming from 167 different countries. 167 different countries. Listen, God can use a virus if he wants to. If he wants to cause a great revival, the next great revival, he can use a virus, he can use you, he can use me, he can use all those wires and equipment and even the funding that you guys have given so faithfully over the past to pay for it. He says, listen, lives are going to be changed, not just, eh, they're better off here on earth. No, souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. Over a half a million people just associated with the church online platform indicated that during the period of March till last month gave their life to Christ because of online services, the same kind that we put out every single week. Over a half a million. Half a million doesn't do it justice. I want you to hear the number. 525,635. And some of you are thinking to yourselves, you're thinking, well, wait, 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 wait. you're not supposed to do that. When you're speaking, all speakers know you round up or you round down because nobody hears the 525,635. Guess what? The five on the end, those guys heard it. It was important to them. Because it eternally changed them. They were saved. I don't want to leave off 25,000 plus people from the number by rounding down to half a million. Listen, because of the money that you gave in this past year, because of your faithfulness, for those of you watching online as well or in the other sanctuary, because of your faithfulness, over a half a million people, 525,000 people, 635 only associated with the online platform that we here at South Park are going to be associated with. That's who's going to do our streaming for us. That makes a difference, and that should be one of the greatest years we've ever experienced. Some of us, we say, well, that's someplace else. Okay, let's come home. And don't tap your watch at me. I know I'm late. Suck it up. We're going to make it. Darren, for your benefit, I was not talking to you that time, okay? <laughs> How about here? Did God hear your prayer this year? Did he answer your prayer? Let's see. Because I've been keeping track. We, as a staff, have been keeping track all year. Every praise that you guys put out, every praise that made it into the weekly prayer list some of you are like we have a prayer list yeah i'm gonna get to that we're gonna have a whole week on that i don't have time to get into that yet but there's a whole section now on praises every one of them took place last year have we forgotten those let me see the first slide here's just some of them some of you are going to find your name leave it there for just a minute ricky some of you are going to find your name do you remember the day that we found out that the doctors were saying that we don't think it's cancer with Monica? You remember that day? You remember all the bam, praise, COVID free, COVID free. Eldon just opened the door. COVID free. Phil, COVID free. Remember all of those? You're going to see them. Give me the next slide. This is the good that happened last year. This is the stuff that you forgot about and that I knew, because I'm a genius, right? I knew you would forget these things. So I told Melissa, I said, track them all. And I'm going to ask you for them at the end of the year. I told her that a year ago, right? Give me the next one. I have them right here. Pages. Both sides. Three columns. That's what we experienced this year. What's the next one? You found your name yet? Some of you watching online, you found your name already. 
they're all over the place. Just give about 10 seconds on each one so everybody can take a peek. That's what God did this year in this church, in your lives. Now, all of these are not church members, but they're loved ones, aren't they? Every one of them. Some of you, you've seen your name up there three or four times already. And you forgot how good last year was. Hezekiah didn't forget. The Gentiles in our passage today didn't forget. I think that's a great example for us. That we not forget. Let me know when you're on the last one, Ricky. Listen, if you go through the next year, same way you came out of last year, it's going to be a painful year. But I'm warning you right now, we're tracking every praise, every victory. Every time we come out of a valley, we're going to track it and you're going to see it again next year. This time next year, because sometimes we have to be reminded. Why do you think that every time we have a service, you hear the gospel? That Jesus Christ came to make a way for you because you could not make a way for yourself that he died on the cross for you, that he paid the penalty for your sins. Why do you think that we continue to say that every time? Because you need reminding. I need reminding of what God has done. And that list that you guys are seeing right now, that's the same as the Bible. That's the same as the verses that say, Christ loved you so much, John three sixteen that he gave his only son. He says, and all you do is confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that God, that you will be saved. We need constant reminding of that. Otherwise, we forget that there's a list. We forget all the promises that are in this book. We, we forget that he has given it to us and that his word never, ever, under any circumstances or virus, or valley fails. It never does. 2020. Need I say more? It was a great year. Some of you need a copy of this. We can make that happen. Because some of you need some more reading time. Listen, I hope. Brother Phil, you guys go ahead and come. Brother David, you come next door. I hope you go into 2021 differently, not than what you went into 2020, because I know how you went into 2020, because I went into it the same way, praying it would be a great year. I hope you go into 2021, 2021 differently than you came out of 2020, because that's what will make the difference this year. It's your attitude. It's how you see what God has done. You saw 11 slides filled up of blessings. How God has blessed you. And specifically, you individually. We didn't put all the other praises on there. They were church-wide. Those were specific. They were personal. We need that kind of reminding all year. We need to be real for Christ this year.